your garments. What do what? Return to the Lord your God, for he is what? Gracious and compassionate. He's what? Slow to anger, abounding in love, and he relents from sending clam. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Who knows? He may turn and have pity. I love this part. And do what? And leave behind a blessing. Oh, God, leave me a blessing. Y'all don't know where that's coming from? Anybody know where that's coming from? He may leave behind a blessing of grain offerings and drink offerings from the Lord your God. Nobody, anybody knows in Scripture where that's coming from? It's coming from Ruth and Boaz. It's talking about the gleaning. It's talking about how when, when you would go out into the fields, those that were prosperous were to leave a little something behind for the folk that had nothing. And it's what, it's what, it's what Naomi told Ruth to go do, is to go out and pick up the gleanings, and pick up the gleanings, which was the, the leftovers that were left by Boaz. And the result of her blessing and Boaz leaving, and every time, because Boaz found favor with Esther, I mean with Ruth rather, every time she went out, he left more. He left more. And so she comes back to, but to Naomi and says, what's going on with this? What's going on with this? And that's when Naomi said, I think this guy likes you. I think he likes you. And he kept doing more and more and more. And that's what this text is referring to. That when you find favor with God, who knows? And if you get that favor renewed with God, that God just might leave you a blessing. He'll leave you something that you can live off. I, I'm not trying to preach that. That's not my message. But let's keep going, all right? Then it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call the sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room, the bride her chamber, let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar, let them say, spare your people, O Lord, do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations, why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Now, that's what I just did today. When I told you that everybody's going to fast. Even teach the children how to fast. Amen? And then the Lord will be what? Jealous for his land and take pity on his people. Now I want you to go down a little bit further. And I want you to go to verse 23. And let's read together. And I'm going to give you the subject of the message and end it right here. Okay? It says what? Be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in righteousness. He sent you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. Remember I told you, get ready for the rain? Mm-hmm. Then go on. What does it say? The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. And he says what? I will repay or I will restore is what the King James Version says. I will restore, repay you for what? The years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts and the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army I sent among you. I will repay, I will restore unto you the years that the locusts and the canker worm have taken away from you. And verse 26 says, you will have plenty to eat until you are what? Full. And somebody get ready to praise him. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has done, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here, my God. It's so, I told you all you need is the word, all you need is the word. You'll praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. Everybody say never again. In other words, I'm not going to be broke anymore. I'm going to be not going to be wanting anymore. I'm not going to have to be crying anymore. Folks not going to have to look at me and say, what in the world is wrong with you? People are not going to say, oh, you've been through. No, 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 no. I'm over what I've been through. Y'all not hearing what I'm telling you. Touch somebody said, I'm over what I've been through. Hallelujah. And touch them said, and I'm not ashamed of my testimony. Help me, help me in the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, I'm not ashamed of my testimony. My God, my God. Y'all better hold my mule. I feel something coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 27 says, And they, then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. And afterward, 
afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions even on my servants. Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. In other words, what he's trying to tell you that in the days of the prophets, the only ones that got the anointing were the Levites and the prophets and specific people. But what Joel is telling us is that when God comes in this day, I don't care if you were a drunk, a whole prostitute, I don't care what you did, get ready for some anointing. Get ready for God to pour his anointing down on you. I don't care who you are, whether you were the servant in the house, whether you were the owner of the house, you don't have to have a pedigree, a pedigree to be anointed. That's an awful lot of setup for about a two minute message. I will repay. I will restore. I will give it back. And this is the message for all of you who have lost anything, who have been through anything, who have suffered loss in any way in your life. Come on with me right here, Andrew. All of you that have been through some stuff, I got a word for you right now. Touch somebody, say, neighbor, get ready for a comeback. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Say, get ready. God's about to send you a comeback. You've been set back for a comeback. Tell him, say, neighbor, God said, get ready for a comeback. Plus, I might say, I'm coming back. I'm getting it all back. Everything I lost in that trial, I'm getting it back. Everything I lost in that fight, I'm getting it back. Every bit of abuse that was on me, I'm getting it back. Woo! I'm finished preaching. Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. There is hope in this. I said there is hope in this. There is hope in this. I was going to use for a subject setback for a comeback. Setback. Setback. Anybody ever been setback? Anybody ever had setbacks in your life? How many thought that was the end? Come on. I'm going to preach to myself then. I'm th th thank you, Nicole. Nicole said, Preach, Bishop. I'm going to preach to me. I thought it was the end. There's a point in life with help me, Holy Ghost. I'm gonna preach to about ten of y'all, and maybe some folks that's watching me online. There is a point in life when stuff can happen, Gene. When death looks attractive. Y'all ain't all, all y'all ain't been there. Don't act like you've been there if you ain't never been there. Don't don't act like you if you've never been where I'm talking about at that place. When death seems attractive. When you're like, Lord, I've done everything I want to do in life. Been everywhere I want to go. You know what? If this is the way it's got to be, come on. Or suicide becomes a reasonable alternative. You know my theory is that when you start complain, contemplating the benefits of it, you're on your way. And don't act like you haven't done it. Don't act you haven't act like you haven't said, why, Lord? Why did I have to go this way? Don't act like you haven't said, Father, if I be willing, let this come pass from me. Don't act like you haven't said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You ain't that holy. You ain't that sanctified. And if you are that sanctified, then you've been through what I'm talking about. There comes a moment when you feel like you have lost. 